Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today's video I'm going to be going over my latest custom controls that I'm using to play Warzone on the PlayStation 4 controller and how it's all set up in the menu screens. The last video I did on this was around June last year and I've just made so many changes to the controls since then. So I just wanted to update everybody on what I'm now running for 2020. There will be a follow up tutorial to this video on how to use these controls in depth. For now I just want to get this video up for you guys because I know a lot of you have been patiently waiting for this one for a while. But before we get into the video, just a few things I want to mention here to kind of clear up. So firstly, I just want to point out these controls are going to be focused on air realistic and tank realistic using mouse aim on the controller. The controls will work fine in arcade, so tank arcade and air arcade, but if you happen to be a sim player watching this, these controls are not going to be for you. And for anybody wondering, I do play with just the PlayStation 4 controller. As of January 2020, I am using back paddles, so I'll just pick some of those up. Honestly, they don't add a whole lot of experience to War Thunder, but if you're kind of on the fence about getting some of these paddles, I would say go for it. They do help a lot. I may even do a video on the paddles that I picked up because they are somewhat unique in that they have four paddles instead of the usual two you get. So that's possibly a future video. Also, I do have a wireless keyboard in front of me. Several of you were asking about that in the chat. Um, I only do use it for the actual chatting game and the rare occasion I'm flying out bombers. I actually have it set up for my bombs and the drop series, things like that. But otherwise, I'm just playing on a normal PlayStation 4 controller. Additionally, I just want to say I won't be covering boats or helicopters in this controls video. And I know a lot of you will be disappointed to hear that. And I did have a bit of a play around with them, but I personally feel those vehicles aren't quite finished yet. Um, it feels like Gadgin just haven't developed them enough yet. And I just can't see any way to fit them into the control scheme currently. So we'll see where Gadgin go with those for now. And maybe revisit them at some point. Now that that's all out of the way, let's get into what you guys are really here for. So, to begin with... I'm going to be going through this from a new player perspective. I did have a few complaints about this in the last video. Um, new players watching, they didn't really have a clue what they were doing or how to get into the advanced controls. So I will be rectifying that with this video and I do apologise for that. So from a new player perspective from the hangar screen, you're just going to want to come up here, select controls and you're going to see something that looks like this. So we get into the advanced controls you're then going to want to press square or if you're playing on Xbox that will be X. I then recommend clearing the default controls by pushing the left stick in. This will go ahead and wipe everything out so all the default controls will be gone and this just gives us a clean slate to work with. You know avoids any potential problems with control conflicts later on because War Thunder does have a terrible habit of having issues with the controls so just go ahead save yourself the trouble here and make sure you clear everything and when you have everything cleared just make sure you're in the mouse aim tab like I have selected here and I'm now going to go ahead and load my save configuration back up just to make this easier to show you guys and explain. Um, if you are new watching this, all you really need to do is copy everything down I have here. Um, pay close attention to what I have to say. Because a lot of this is going to be optional. You know, some of this is advanced techniques. Um, and there are going to be various ways of setting this up depending on your playstyle. So... The first section we're really interested in here is weaponry. Now, a lot of you are going to be used to firing with R2, either from experience in other games, 
you know, first person shooters, whatever you guys have played in the past, or just from playing with the default ward and the controls. And to be honest, even playing with my custom controls because I did run my guns on R2 for a long while. And it's not something to be overly concerned about, but I just feel like I need to mention this. So I've done a fair bit of testing recently and I personally feel that the default R2 axis for guns is adding some delay. Particularly when trying to find machine guns with a light press and then moving to the full press for cannons. I'm convinced there is some delay there and it's cost me a fair few kills. So my recommendation is just to run cannons and machine guns on separate buttons, get rid of the axis. Uh, it's nothing but trouble in my opinion. So I have mine set up on R1 and R2 here. R1 fires my machine guns and R2 fires both machine guns and cannons together. Now, alternatively, if you prefer to use your R2 for something else, such as, you know, the zoom or tracking, you can go ahead and assign your machine guns to the right stick pressed in and just have your cannons on R1. So again, you're getting rid of the axis, but you've still got your zoom available. Moving on, we have bombs and rockets. So, you guys can probably tell, you know, I've not really posted any bomber gameplay and I'm really not a bomber player myself. But yeah, this is something that's always requested. I get asked this a lot in the comments. And if I'm being completely open with you guys, bombs and rockets just really doesn't fit into my control scheme very well. You have to bear in mind, this control scheme was purely built for playing fighters. You know, like I said at the beginning of the video, the rare occasion that I do actually end up taking a bomber out, I have a wireless keyboard in front of me. So I personally just opt to bind the bombs to that just to make it simpler. But you know, for those of you that don't have a keyboard, maybe you don't have a desk uh, for whatever reasons, I'm guessing you're going to want to have these bound anyway. So on the controller, you can go ahead and bind bombs to square and your rockets on circle just as an example the only problem here is that square and circle also happens to be the your left and right as well so if you accidentally your to the left for instance when you've got the bombs equipped you're gonna go ahead and drop your bombs which is unfortunate and it can be annoying um, you could perhaps temporarily unbind your when you're playing bombers but again, it's going to be in your mind to actually press square to yaw, so you can't really win either way. Honestly guys, I would just pick up a keyboard. You know, you're going to get tons more bindings. You know, remember every single key on the keyboard opens up a potential binding. So you're getting so much more. Uh, even if it's one of those rubbish keyboards, the, the wireless Bluetooth keyboards that plugs into the bottom of your controller. It's better than none at all. Um, not to mention, having the keyboard will allow you to respond in chat and you're going to be able to communicate with friendlies. So, a keyboard is highly recommended. Next, we have rocket salvos, air to ground missiles, air to air missiles. And I'm just going to skip over this because it's jets. You know, I'm guessing if you've made it as far as the Jets, you at least have some knowledge of the game. So, you know, you should be able to set this up on your own without too much trouble. I just feel it would need too much tweaking to get these controls jet friendly. Um, if I was going to set this up, I would probably go back to using R2 for the machine guns and cannons on the Axis. Just to free up those extra buttons. And you could then use R1 for the missiles or as a, a kind of a shift key. Um, again, you also have the option of un unbinding yaw. I don't believe it's used as much in jets, so there's definitely some workaround you can use there if you happen to be a jet player. But for now, I'm just going to leave that to you guys and hope you've got the experience to actually set that up for yourself. 
radar controls so this is something I actually covered very recently in a video the good news is since I did that video the radar has seen a massive overhaul in the game uh, they fixed a lot of bugs and it works much better now I believe the radar now enables when you spawn in so you no longer have to actually enable it every time you spawn in with a vehicle and as a result you can probably get away with just ignoring this whole section it pretty much just works out of the box now but yeah if you want the fully functional radar so the option to turn it on and off adjust the range and all that stuff this is what I'm personally running and as far as I know it works perfectly fine um, I did take the P61 out recently I didn't have any issues to note there so this should be fine Reload guns, not much really insane about this. Um, I have this assigned to X plus D pad left, and that goes ahead and reloads the guns in arcade. Or if you're on the runway in realistic, that's going to go ahead and reload you as well. Moving on to the main control axis, I have throttle assigned to the right stick up and down. This is mostly going to be default behavior. The only adjustment I've made here is maxing out the dead zone to prevent any accidental adjustments because I happen to use my right stick for roll as well. So just go ahead and copy all this down. Make sure you have the relative control enabled. The multiplier should be set to 1 and of course you want the axis assigned to the right stick up and down at the top right here. When you have copied all that down go ahead and press OK. You will then get asked about adding or replacing bindings. Just make sure you press add. Hold for war emergency power. This one is entirely up to you. Depends how you play and what your preferences are. So I have mine set to no and this basically means I can throttle up once, let go of the stick and that is going to maintain max speed with war emergency power enabled all the time. Roll axis, we have this setup on the right stick, left and right. Again this is mostly default behaviour. The only change that's worth mentioning here is the multiplier. So I've got the multiplier here set to 2 and by doing this I've essentially doubled the sensitivity of the roll rate and the max roll rate input is going to be reached much sooner so you know I've essentially doubled that like I say and as a result I don't necessarily have to move the stick so far. So again just go ahead and add that when you're asked. Next up we have the pitch axis and this is really the whole point to these controls. You know, without these max and min values, you're pretty much just going to be cannon fodder like the rest of the players. So I have my max and min values set to L1 and L2. The main reason I've changed this is, again, through extensive testing, I found moving the pitch controls to one side of the controller you actually gain more control. You're essentially dedicating the control surfaces to one hand and as a result you're going to have faster response times and you can just transition between pitch up and pitch down that much quicker. Um, I'll be going over the pitch mechanics in future videos but the basic idea of the max pitch is you press and hold L1 to pitch the plane up. You keep holding this and you will then go into a loop. And as long as you're holding L1, so you're in this loop, your left stick can then be used to look around and the plane will not follow so long as you don't let go of L1. And this is essentially how I play the game. You know, as soon as I go into any defensive maneuvers, I'm holding L1 and I'm really just controlling the direction of the plane with the right stick. 
So we'll go into all that into more detail in the next video or two. For now let's just move on. So next up we have the yaw axis. And this is getting fairly complicated now. So just like I had with the pitch, I have the standard max and min values here for your left and right. So that's square and circle. Where it gets somewhat complicated is I now have my your assigned to the right stick left and right as well. And if you've been paying attention, you might realize this also happens to be where the rule is assigned. So I essentially have rule on your on the same axis here. And this is something I've only really introduced recently to these controls. It's somewhat of an advanced technique. Um, it's primarily to help with the angle fighting. So the small amount of ruddy here helps to just speed up the roll rate and I can switch angles more efficiently. If you do end up copying this down, just bear in mind the nonlinearity and the multiply here are acting as a kind of dampener. So if we take up a look up here on the logical axis, only around 30% input range from the yaw on the right stick is actually being used. Uh, this is just a dampener here, so this is just really to prevent the plane from going into a flat spin. Because if we had the full range from the yaw here, combined with the, the um, roll rate, it would be extremely difficult to control. So you want this very subtle effect from the rudder here, just to aid you in the roll, and that's literally all it's for. Moving on to mechanization, we have ignite boosters. Again, this is primarily going to be a jet mechanic, although I do believe this activates the boosters on the Wyvern as well. So I've just gone ahead and set this up on X plus square. So I press both of those in and that is going to activate the boosters on the jets or the Wyvern. Toggle flaps. So this one is where a lot of players actually fall short with their controls. So toggle flaps will generally only allow you to transition from raised to combat flaps. If we go back to this instructor thing, it's going to be very much speed and instructor controlled. So if you think about that computer controlled instructor, it's actually controlling your flaps as well with this option. And unless you're going slow enough for the instructor to deem safe enough, it's actually going to prevent you from bringing out your takeoff or landing flaps. And this is going to put you at somewhat of a disadvantage. Especially in close dogfights um, where takeoff flaps can make a massive difference. Remember, flaps generate extra lift, so you're able to slow down and momentarily turn more efficiently by bringing out takeoff flaps or landing flaps, for instance. So, personally, I highly recommend setting up individual flap controls for raising and lowering the flaps. Uh, I know it's two bindings whereas with the toggle flaps you're only using the one but believe me it's well worth it. So I have mine set to d-pad left to lower them and d-pad right to raise them and I find that works perfectly fine for me. Now I've also gone ahead and moved the air brake to d-pad up just so it flows that much better with the flaps as well um, and it's now easier to access you know I figured how often do I really use the landing gear in a game maybe once or twice generally when you're taking off and when you're coming in to land so it made sense to have that on the toggle with X plus d-pad left rather than waste it on it on a proper binding um, like just d-pad up so it just made sense to change that the way I've got it there just bear in mind if you are playing arcade when you hit reload so again reload is going to be X plus left obviously this also is now the gear so it's going to activate the gear at the same time so when you reload you need to remember to tap it twice otherwise 
your gear is going to be left out. So just bear that in mind. Next up we have the gunners. So this is going to be your gunners on the bombers and the odd attacker that gets a rear gunner. Now to set this one up we momentarily need to switch to realistic controls. So I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to switch over to realistic. This will allow us to set the X and the Y axis for the gunner aiming. You know, Gadgin in their wisdom, they for some reason did not include this in the mouse aim tab. Who knows how Gadgin thinks. But yeah, anyway, open up the corresponding X and Y axis for the gunners and set this up appropriately as I have. Additionally, you may want to go ahead and adjust the sensitivities here and possibly set the gunner view to invert it so your movements with the gunner actually match what you're doing with the joystick on screen. And once you've got all that set, just switch back to the mouse aim mode again and we'll proceed to the camera control section. So there are a few things to bear in mind here. Toggle view is going to switch from third person view to virtual cockpit view and first person cockpit view. Playing air realistic you're going to be using this one a lot particularly at the beginning of the match you're going to be switching into virtual cockpit to set your climbing angle and once you get into any action you're then going to be generally switching back to third person so I recommend getting familiar with this one it's going to be used a lot tracking camera so this is the one that looks at your selected target it's not something I use very often but it does help just to keep the situational awareness now and again and I just have this set to the touchpad so I can tap and hold to look where my selected target is. Aiming mode, this is the one I tend to use more than anything really. And this is actually the default L2 behavior with that you get with the stock wall and the controls. And basically it will automatically move your cursor over your target roughly. So even if you lose sight of your target you can essentially find them with this option here. Um, a lot of players make the mistake of using this for aiming, so bear in mind the default controls come set up with this on the L2 trigger. And I think it's a mistake. You know, it can work to some extent, mainly in the head ons, but the camera angle you get with this is very awkward, making any kind of precise aiming extremely difficult. The only time I really advise using this over the actual manual aiming is when you're forced into a head-on situation and there's just no other way out of getting out of it. Otherwise I just tap this option very briefly if anything just to keep my target in my field of view so I can watch what they're doing and react to that accordingly. look back so this is something I've introduced to the controls recently again and it just allows me to do a full 180 degree turn with the camera so I can just look behind that much quicker zoom axis so we have a few options to consider here uh, lately I prefer to have mine on an actual button press rather than the axis uh, like I was saying with the guns, it, it removes any potential for delay. So I'm using the max value here on my right stick pressed in. And that is essentially going to toggle my max zoom. Alternatively, if you do prefer to have your zoom on one of the back triggers, so the R2 axis for instance, or the L2 axis, you can go ahead and set this up here. Everything's pre-filled. All you need to do is copy this down and assign the axis. And that is pretty much it for the camera. Um, 
bear in mind I don't use any view access options here since I'm running the mouse lock activation on the X button which we'll get into towards the end of the video because that is under the common tab so moving on to miscellaneous this is entirely optional I have the aerobatic smoke set to X plus down on the d-pad and I really only use this when I'm in a really bad position maybe I'm outnumbered or someone just has a massive energy advantage over me I may just pop the smoke to kind of lure them into making a mistake and hoping that I can you know make use of that mistake to my advantage otherwise it's kind of a useless binding instructor so this section is very important I recommend setting all these to no so in War Thunder we have what's known as the instructor and this instructor will attempt to autocorrect all of our inputs so for instance also control of the airplane near the ground this will actually restrict your movements when you get to around 200 meters um, the idea I guess is to prevent you from crashing but once you get the basic feel for the game you're more than capable of manually correcting 90% of these crashes having this set to one is really only going to hinder your turning ability and your performance since you will be constantly fighting against it so my advice just set all of these to no aiming again another extremely important section um, this is essentially the option that configures your stick as the mouse aim so I have mine set up on the left stick and that allows me to move the cursor around on screen if we open up the axis options I've adjusted my dead zone to zero so I'm just getting the maximum response time out of my joystick now depending how sensitive or worn your joystick is you may need to increase this to prevent any unwanted movements the same can be said if you have twitchy hands, maybe you've had too much coffee, you know your hands are shaky, just go ahead, set a slight dead zone here and it will generally help. Otherwise just run it on the lowest setting you are comfortable with. Mouse smoothing, so this is one I really can't decide whether it's doing anything for us playing on a controller. If there is any effect, I'm just not seeing it. So you can pretty much just ignore that one. Um, just make sure you set it to no. Because honestly, if it is actually doing anything at all, the last thing we want is our inputs being smoothed out because it's just another instructor kind of thing. Moving on to the sensitivity settings, we have three options here and these are generally again going to be down to your personal preference what you prefer I'll just give you a quick rundown of the options here so you get the basic idea so aim acceleration is going to be a kind of aim assist um, it slows down the inputs so the moment you press the stick the moment you move the stick the inputs are going to slowly be sped up and that is known as the acceleration side um, the only thing worth noting is the acceleration is going to be time based so any input you make on the joystick you have around 20 milliseconds before it's sped up and the acceleration delay is essentially how you can control that delay there so the time based acceleration is controlled with the acceleration delay I believe 50% is around 20 milliseconds and you can adjust that either higher or lower depending on your preference and then we have controller camera sensitivity so this one is your overall game sensitivity 
Um, I like to run either 75 or 100% anywhere in between. That is generally going to be fine. You just don't want to go too low. Um, obviously, if you go too low, you're going to be... You're really going to be too slow to actually do anything. So, my recommendation, don't go any lower than 75%. Um, if you do have trouble keeping your cursor stable, one setup I used to run was 75% acceleration, 85% delay, and 100% overall game control sensitivity. So that may help, um, but yeah, I'm running 25, 10, and 75% currently. Moving on to the common tab, so I'll go ahead and switch over to the common tab here. There are just a few more bindings to go through here for the plane controls and we're going to be finished then. So we have the tactical map on the d-pad down button. This one is very important that you assign it to something that's going to be easy to access since you're going to be constantly checking the map in game. Likewise with the statistics. Again, this is something you need to be checking very often in game since it will tell you how many players are going to be left in the game, how many players you're potentially facing, so you need to be aware of that and constantly checking it. I have mine assigned to X plus D pad right. Um, it's not necessarily easy to access, but it's what I'm used to. Leave the vehicle, not something you will like to be using very often but it can be useful for the end game um, let's say you're the last well let's say the last player on the enemy team is a bomber you know they've climbed literally to the moon more or less they're at 20,000 feet something ridiculous you know there's no chance you're gonna get up to them and the best thing you can do in this situation provided you have a plane that can equip bombs is just head back to the base land repair, bailout, and provided you have this leave the vehicle option bound here, you can then bail out the plane and you're able to respawn back in with a bomb equipped. Again, provided your plane can actually carry bombs. And you can then use this to your advantage. You know, you can go ahead, drop it on a base, uh, take out some vehicles, and that can actually make the difference in the tickets. And on the rare occasion, it will also force the bomber down because you know they're up there trying to win the game and if you're starting to drain the tickets they may just come down and you may be able to get the win from that. Uh, surprisingly the bailout option on the runway is not something a lot of players know about so you may have also learned something there. So again I have mine on X plus left on the D-pad Show the status of the vehicle modules. Again, it's not something you're going to be using very often. But it can be handy in certain situations. So, when you take a hit to the engine, for instance, you can go ahead, press this, and you'll actually be able to see any damage. Um, it gives you an indication of the kind of damage you've taken. And you can use this to assess, uh, assess whether you need to return to base and repair. So I have this on D-pad left, I just hold that down and it shows me the damage. Lock target, so this one is extremely important playing on the controller. If we think back to the target camera and the aim assist on the earlier page, the one where it looked at the plane, um, both of these options rely on an actual target being pre-selected so it's crucial you get into the habit of selecting targets and again you really need something you need this on something that's very easy to access i have mine bound to the left stick pressed in uh, that's what i used to aim so it just makes a lot of sense to me personally chat so this is how i type on the keyboard again uh, like I was saying at the beginning, this is something that you guys have asked me before now. So I use the keyboard, I just press enter on the keyboard or control plus enter and that's going to allow me to start typing a message out in the chat. 
and I can then send that off by pressing the enter key on the keyboard. Bear in mind you will also need a switch chat key bound so that you can switch from team chat to all chat. So you want to speak to the team or the enemy team or everybody at once. You can just go ahead and toggle that. I have this bound to tab on the keyboard. Push to talk so if you happen to be using the in-game chat, the voice chat, uh, when you're squatted up, you're probably going to want to have push to talk enabled so the voice isn't being constantly transmitted. Uh, personally, I just use the PSN chat, so I can kind of disregard this. Uh, the PSN chat is actually very good. The quality is great in there, so it's not so much of an issue if, if you use the chat in PSN. Um, but yeah, if you're ever in a situation where you're forced to use the game chat, maybe PSN chat is down, something like that, uh, you can just bear this option in, my, in mind. Artillery strike on tactical maps. So we have call for artillery strike, toggle artillery aiming modes and cancel the artillery aiming. And this is going to be tanks. I was hoping to actually combine planes and tanks in this single video. But it's getting ridiculous along, so I'm now thinking there is going to be a part 2 to this video. So I'm just going to cover planes in this video today, and I'll be doing tanks in a separate video. So if we just move on for now to the view controls, we have zoom camera now. Obviously we're using the zoom camera axis, so on the previous page we were using the max value for that. So this one can be left blank, and you can just ignore it. Mouse lock activation very important again if we go back to that previous page we are not using a view axis so we have our camera assigned on x here and this is the camera look activation um, again we also have x plus triangle so if we remember x and triangle is look behind and that just means we can move the camera with that as well so x and x plus triangle activates the camera look so that's going to be our free look camera Aim sensitivity, so this option actually controls how sensitive your touchpad is. Honestly, the touchpad is, is useless, so you may as well just forget it ever existed. Um, just set this value here to the lowest you can, and just be done with it. Like I say, forget the touchpad even exists. Um, it's only really useful for navigating the menus, but that is about it. Camera mouse look speed, supposedly this one controls how fast your mouse look camera so the camera on the left stick when we hold X this option is supposed to control how fast that one moves and how sensitive the camera is but it's currently bugged I have opened the bug report numerous times on this but it's never been fixed um, I've kind of lost hope on that being ever fixed but yeah if it does ever work you generally would want to set this to the highest sensitivity just so you get the most speed out of your camera and so you can pan around as fast as possible. Camera smoothness just controls how smooth your camera moves so you don't want it to be jittery or anything I just suggest setting it at 0%. Sensitivity in zoom controls how sensitive your aiming is when you're actually zoomed in so I'm using the right stick so when I'm holding the right stick that is going to be my zoom and this will control how sensitive the cursor is. I recommend keeping it 100% just so you're getting the same aiming that you get without your zoom in. Uh, I know some of you will prefer to actually reduce this but honestly if you keep the 100% you will eventually build muscle memory and you'll be able to pull off snapshots when you're in the zoom. Radio messages for our team, so this is your radial menu which displays all the quick chat commands and I have actually assigned my reassigned my start menu, so the pause menu, I've reassigned that to X plus start which kind of frees up this um, options button here for a more important binding. So I just hold start and that's going to bring up my radial menu with the chat commands. You can also go ahead and set up these quick radio messages. So we have 10 quick radio messages here. 
And that is unfortunately going to bring us to the end of the video. Um, if you've managed to make it to the end, congratulations. You should now hopefully have a fully working control configuration for the planes at least and it should match exactly what I'm playing with. Go ahead and save everything, test it all out in test flight, make sure everything is working um, and also I highly recommend you actually save this as a preset. I'm not sure if Xbox have this at the moment but if you're on PlayStation 4 you can go ahead and save this and then you can load it up anytime. Now if something doesn't quite seem seem quite right after you go ahead and test this um, please review the video chances are that you just missed something if you're still unsure feel free to ask for help in the comments um, I'll do my best to help out other than that thanks for watching uh, I truly hope this video has helped in some way and more importantly I hope you've actually enjoyed watching it I'll probably cover the tank controls in the next video just to get all these controls out of the way. So yeah, until next time, cheers.